This is Sony A7S 3 It's a 12.1 megapixel full frame camera with brand new backside illuminated CMOS sensor. It has the brand new Bionz XR processing unit, 9.44 million dot electronic viewfinder, optical plus electronic image stabilization, a flip out screen that can be controlled fully with touch and it can record 422 10-bit videos in H.264 or H.265 up to 4K 120. 20 frames per second. So I guess the question is, is this $3,500 beast any good? We waited for this camera for five years, five years, and every year there would be a rumor that Sony is going to release A7S III and we would rush to the events and nothing, nothing. So I thought waiting for so long was going to raise our expectations so high in our brain curves, if we have any left, that it was going to be unsatisfiable. But I think unwillingly Canon came with their 8K camera and brought our expectations down. So when Sony announced a7 III, it sounded like the perfect camera. And it is a perfect camera. It doesn't oversell anything. It doesn't overpromise anything. It just does what it says on the box. And that's amazing. And I feel like that's going to add a lot of value to my work. I've been playing with this camera ever since I got it. And it's been nothing but fantastic. Also, watch this. I actually cannot snap my fingers. That was just a sound effect. Before we talk about anything, let's talk about active image stabilization we have on this camera. We have no stabilization. We have 5.5 step in body optical image stabilization. And on top of that right now, we have an electronic image stabilization. Sony calls that active. What that does is applies 10% crop and gives you an electronic image stabilization on top of the optical image stabilization we have. Right now I'm holding this camera in my hand and as you can see, everything looks deliciously stabilized. It's not crazy, but it's not bad and it's absolutely a lot better than what we had before. Let me show you. This is the standard stabilization, which is the 5.5 step optical image stabilization. We gained 10% from around the frame but as you can see it can shake easily and this is what it is like when the stabilization is completely turned off everything is shaky you cannot trust your arm you need a stabilizer to use the camera like this or you need to mount it somewhere let's turn the stabilization back on so we can talk a little bit more now you may be asking yourself why would i ever need the stabilization to be turned off very good question. Well, in some cases where you want to mount this camera to a car or something and you want the thing you mounted to be stabilized perfectly, that's when you turn the stabilization completely off. Also, for example, when you're in a car and it's mounted to the car, sometimes the vibration starts to shake everything. So the camera, the stabilization in the camera starts going wild. That's, those are the times when we want it off. I use it mostly when it's on a slider. 
Also, the active stabilization works up to 4K 60 frames per second. When you switch to 4K 120 frames per second, it's only optical image stabilization. The active image stabilization gets turned off. Now, let's talk about video. This camera can shoot 4K 120 frames per second video with sound. Recording 4K 120 frames per second video with audio is actually very important because you can film it normally and have audio and when something super cool happens and when something super cool happens you can keep on recording and have that slow motion in your footage also it has real-time human and animal eye autofocus and since i'm something in the middle i'm always in focus that means while i'm sitting on my desk it doesn't focus on the product on the table but it focuses on my face it looks into my eyes like lovers do now let's talk about formats this camera can record in XAVCS, just like the other Sony cameras, and it's in LGOP. LGOP stands for Long Group of Photographers. I made that up. It means Long Group of Photos. And what that does is it looks into the background or it looks into the stuff that are not moving and groups them together and compresses them together so it creates a smaller file. But what that means is you lose the data that is around the parts that are not moving. This camera can also record in XAVCSH. That is the same thing, but it's in H265, which means it is compressed more. But just so you know, when a footage is compressed more, imagine a paper, it's folded more. So your computer has to unfold it more to see what's in it. So it means more work for your computer but more space on your memory card and then there's XAVCSI and that is all intra what all intra does is it compresses every frame within itself not in a group of photos so you get to have information even if the background is not moving in every frame of course that makes the file size bigger but you have a lot more information to work with a7S3 can record 4K 120 frames per second, 422 10-bit, 280 megabits per second video in XAVCS and XAVCSH mode. If you switch to all intra XAVCSI, it can record 4K 60 frames per second, 422 10-bit in 600 megabits per second. And if you want to attach an external recorder to this, you can record full frame 4K 60 frames per second, 16-bit raw footage unbelievable now at this point you may be thinking well i heard those numbers back to back from all the other reviewers but what do they all mean let me explain it to you because it's fascinating and it's a lot of fun it's, and it's actually really easy to understand 8-bit means a camera can record 256 shades of green, 256 shades of blue, and 256 shades of red. In combination, that makes 16.7 million colors. That may sound a lot, but when it comes to editing, when, when it comes to pushing the colors and stuff like that a lot, it may cause problems. In 10-bit, you're recording 1,024 shades of green, 1,024 shades of blue, and 1,024 shades of whatever is left, red. And in combination that makes one billion colors and that makes editing a lot more easier because the degradation for example in the sky is a lot more smoother there's a lot more information in there now let's talk about chroma subsampling which is one of my favorite things in this camera world imagine four pixels on top and four pixels underneath it so two rows of four pixels in the picture you're seeing while you're recording in 420, the top row, the four pixels, all four of them have light information, luma value, but only two pixels have color value. And on the bottom row, surfing USA, there's only luma value. So when it's combined, you're seeing a colorful image, but in reality, it's not 
doesn't have that much color information. In 422, the top row has Luma information in every pixel and two of them have color information. And in the bottom row, all four of them have light information, Luma information and color information, which gives you a lot more information about color in your footage. So what does this all mean? This all means that when it comes to editing, having a 10-bit 422 video is a lot easier to work with. When you're working with 420 8-bit video, you have to prepare for everything before you hit record button. It's not the end of the world, but 422 10-bit makes it a lot easier and better. Wait, don't you want to talk about the 12 megapixel? Let's talk about 12 megapixel because I think that is one of the very important things. Let's go. Welcome back. Um, so, by the way, it's nighttime. It's 7.57 here. I'm shooting this 158 F14 and ISO 2000 in all intra mode. This is handheld. I'm just leaning on this wall here so it doesn't shake while I'm talking because I feel like I'm a little excited but let's talk about the sensor why 12 megapixel when we have 48 megapixel 108 megapixel phones in our pockets what's the deal with 12 megapixel full-frame camera well since the sensor is bigger the megapixels on it which is the wrong way to describe it, they're actually photo sites photo sites are bigger when photo sites are bigger each pixel size gets bigger meaning each pixel gathers more light so in low light 12 megapixel full frame camera performs fantastic actually that is why a lot of the cell phones it's actually depends on the quad bear filter array it's it it goes this subject goes deep but it's okay um, that's why on the cell phones you need a lot of light to take advantage of their 48 megapixel or 108 megapixel cameras and that is why 12 megapixel for a 4k camera is fantastic because all you need is actually 8.5 megapixels to have enough resolution to shoot in 4k and having that gigantic sensor back there backside illuminated full frame 12 megapixel sensor allows you to shoot in situations like this with no worry at all and then this happened hello future Farouk here i just i just want to make sure that we are on the same page with what happened here. The camera was casually on the wall and I was walking towards the camera. And as you can see, I wasn't even in focus. And then this happened. And I watch the right side of the screen. Something happened and power went off. And boom, I'm in focus. <laughs> it focused while the power was out that's all i wanted to point out back to the video oh the power died let's see what we can do ah it's back come on come on the flip out screen is fantastic and if you want, you can set the brightness of the monitor to sunny weather in every possible combination you can think of. This is in H.265 4K 120 frames per second. And as you can see, 
sunny weather is still supported, it is turned on. Also, if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, unlike the other cameras, the screen doesn't get blocked out. So you don't need to put an extra layer of screen protector on this to make it work with polarized sunglasses. Also using the touch screen when, while you're shooting, you can just touch here and switch between tap to focus, tap to track, or you can just turn it off. So whenever you touch the screen, it doesn't start tracking or focusing on something. Also, you can pinch to zoom. As a long time Sony shooter, this new menu in the beginning seemed a little confusing because I got so used to the other menu and I know it inside out really well. But you get used to this very easy and you can find whatever you like very easily. I think it just took me one day to get used to it. When it comes to overheating during my shoots, this camera stayed right there on a slider and I keep it on to adjust the what's going to happen here. So that camera was there, turned on all the time, waiting for me to set up the beauty shot I was going to do. And, I sh and I've seen the heat sign once, and that was when the auto power temperature was set to standard. And as soon as I turned it to high, I didn't see the heat sign at all. And I shot in 4K 120 frames per second for a really long time and it was, it was just fine. This is really important to me because sometimes I get a product literally one day before the release and I have to set everything up and start shooting and the video has to go live the next day. I really don't have time to wait for the camera to cool down. I did this years ago once and I was just putting the camera back in front of the AC waiting for it to cool down and go back and work. Um, luckily with this camera, you will not have that problem unless you're in a really, really hot environment. Here in Los Angeles, California, during this um, hot weather, I didn't have any problems. Also, because it supports power delivery via USB-C, during these long shoots, my battery didn't drain at all, which is something else that is super important because once this camera is mounted on that slider, the, the cables and everything is just tangled there and everything has to keep on working. So I don't have time to take the camera out, change the battery and put it back on. Having the option to use the power delivery via USB-C was just fantastic. I didn't worry about anything at all. I was able to shoot all day long. The doors on the side of this camera are very nicely designed. They do not dangle, they do not get in the way. Usually with A7R3, when you wanna connect the HDMI out and USB-C, they're right next to each other and there's a dangly door between them. So you end up kind of twisting that door a little bit, which is something I don't enjoy and like. With this, I don't have to do anything like that. As you can see, compared to A7R Mark IV, they moved the C1 button from there to back here, which is not a big deal. Now this is a dedicated record button. Also, you can use the shutter button to record if you want as well. And one of the nice things you can do is you can go to different set for still and movie. And here you can select what you want to be different between the movie setting and the still setting. Shutter is set to 50, f-stop is, uh, is set to 1.8, ISO 160. So now when I switch to the photo mode, it just goes to my other settings. So that's pretty useful because sometimes you take a photo with completely different settings and then you have to shoot a video and then when you go back into the video mode, you have to set everything back to the way it was. This remembers it and I liked it a lot. There are a lot of customizations you can do on this camera and they are all very useful. We also have a new door on the memory card slot. It used to be like this. Now you just pull it down a little bit. It's easy to pull it back and it opens up like that very easily. And this takes the SD cards and the CF Express cards. I don't have a CF Express card yet, but when I do, 
I cannot wait to see what I can do with it. So you can use the dual memory card slot and you can prioritize one of them and then you can select your recording mode. It can be standard, it, it can be simultaneous where it records the two memory cards. Let's say you're shooting at a wedding and the memory cards are extremely important. You cannot ask people to sit back down and kiss the bride again. Or you can have a record videos on one and photos on the other one or you can have it in a relay mode and in the relay mode automatically switches to the next memory card once the first memory card you prioritized gets filled up but because this camera works harder compared to the other cameras it kind of drains the battery faster Normally, if I'm about to leave with my Sony a7R Mark IV or Mark III, if it has 60% battery, I, <laughs> that's usually good enough for me. De of course, depends on what I'm doing. But for my shoot, if I'm just going outside to shoot and just talk to the camera, it's usually enough for me. But with this, I feel like I would bring at least one extra battery. Even though the flip out screen is amazing, there is something weird about the rotation of what we're seeing. So this is when you're looking at the camera from your angle. But if I tilt this a little bit, it turns upside down, which means if I want to use this camera like this and if, if I want to see this, if, if something is, you know, reflecting, it turns upside down. If you like shooting in APS-C mode, you have to switch to 1080p. APS-C mode is something I use a lot. It basically crops in the sensor and still gives you the same quality, even actually higher quality image. On this camera, you get the down sampled better image quality. So during the beauty shots, that's something I like to use a lot when I don't like to switch lenses or anything because there's a lot of balancing and stuff going on during those beauty shots. Um, on this camera, you can do that only in 1080p. You cannot do it in 4K because, you know, 12 megapixel. So who is this camera for? Well, it's obviously a video-oriented camera more than a photo-oriented camera. So if your main focus is video, you're going to love this camera. Plus, for social media, 12 megapixel photos will be mostly more than enough. If you're looking for a camera that is going to work for you for years to come, that can shoot a simple 8-bit 420 video if you like, or can go crazy with 16-bit RAW, this is the camera for you. From the lowest settings to the highest, this camera gives you a great looking footage. And I think that makes A7S III a fantastic camera and a great investment. To me, this is the perfect camera. I'm very happy with this. I have to send this one back but I cannot wait for mine to come. I ordered two of them, so I can start working and make my videos look better than they are. So, good job, Sony, but stop releasing stuff, so, you know, stop, stop it. You just released A7C and then now PlayStation 5, and then Xperia 5 Mark II. Okay, calm down, we gotta stop. <laughs> also, thank you for saving us from this. I mean, not you, Gerald. No, 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 not you, Gerald. The, the, this mirror thingy. Let's do it. Oh, you can't smell. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I told them already. Everybody knows by now. You want me to do a sound effect for you? No, I'll find it on the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for it. <laughs>